If you don't know, my name is Glendon Cameron, and I am a internet marketer, a title that I seriously love. And it's really core to what we're going to talk about tonight, because essentially, I thought I was in control of my life when I really wasn't. I was in control of maybe 60%. Now, I know there are people like, you can't control your life. Things happen, or if you're very religious, it's God's will, so on and so forth. But I discovered some stuff when I was living in that boarding house. I actually discovered many things. Some things I didn't realize what they were until long after I had left that situation. It was it was kind of crazy. It was really, really strange. But by going through that process and going through the storage auction process and then getting to becoming a marketer, I actually started designing my life. And I did bits and pieces of it Incidentally, I was doing the right thing, but I didn't know why I was doing it. In the course of starting the Hustler Mindset Project, and even, you know, that really did it, I started interviewing and doing a lot of consulting. That really opened up my eye to what was really happening roughly this time last year. The reason I'm doing the Design Your Life webinar and workshop is as an entrepreneur, as someone that's trying to consistently seek self-improvement, we often put what we think is the most important thing first and what we think is the least important thing second, third, or fourth, and we wonder why our lives are a mess. I was doing very well financially as a storage auction house, working, you know, five days, maybe seven days a week. I was really putting in hours and personal life didn't actually suck, but it could have been better. I wasn't really managing it because I didn't design my life. I let my life design me. So as an entrepreneur, as someone who wants to have a better life, I'm going to give you what I didn't do, and I'm going to tell you what I started to do roughly in 2009. The first time that I attempted to design my life was when I was in that boarding house and I used my hustler mindset to get a job and create a fake reference to essentially solve a big big problem living in the boarding house and not making any money. I was actually designing my life at that point. That night I was in the room going through, should I go to school? Should I finish up my uh, undergrad degree and get a master's? And then there was the six-year plan, and about $28,000. I was designing my life, and I created a high level of energy I had never, ever experienced before. What I didn't know was, it was like I was like a kid with a gun. I had a very powerful tool, but I didn't know what I had. I didn't know until about 2009 when I sat down and I wrote that first book. I knew what I was doing. I knew how to go about it. And I had a firm understanding how these things worked. Whereas before, I didn't. So that's what I'm giving you. The reason I'm creating this webinar, this workshop is anyone that's listening to this has designs on being more financially successful. That is the first thing. And what I'm telling you is when you design your life properly, you can be financially successful, but even more important, you can be extremely happy because you don't have to sacrifice one to have the other if you design your life. If you live your life or you just kind of go along for the ride or worst, the absolute worst, you live your life for others that don't give a damn about you. That is a sure recipe for failure and misery.
This is the thing I didn't really understand. Earl Nightingale really helped me with this. And Dr. Joseph E. Murray, you know, these, these things I keep recommending, you know, Lead the Field by Earl Nightingale and The Power of Subconscious Mind by Dr. Joseph E. Murray. It opened up my mind to the power of choice. Due to my upbringing, which was a very conservative, not totally religious, but quasi-religious, very conservative, very by the book background, I was never introduced or told to the power of choice. I'm a male. I must work. I must go out and earn money and be a man. No one ever said you could be, you know, they would tell you, you can be anything you want. But the minute that you started coming up with an idea that was outside of the boundaries of the box that they set out for you, there was consequences and sour looks and side eyes. So it was a false message. We're going to tell you that to kind of hopefully keep your self-esteem intact. But really, we don't believe in you. We don't believe you can do it. And if you do it, God bless you. Well, this is the most damning thing that I discovered. Either way you choose, if you choose to design your life, it's a choice. If you choose not to do it, it's a choice. Heads or tails, either way you go, it's a choice. And the inertia of being human is so, it weighs you down. It really, really weighs you down. And you kind of lose focus because when you're a child, you know all this stuff. You know what you want. You know what you don't want. You absolutely have no guile. If you're upset, you're upset. Everyone in the room knows it. If you are happy, you're happy. Everyone in the room knows it. And if you want a cookie, you was like, hey, I want a cookie. No, I don't want the broccoli. So you're very, very firm on what you want and what you don't want. But since you're a child, you don't have really great perspective in some of your wants and not wants are actually not good for you. But if you can keep that firm decision-making process in, into adulthood, you can be a very powerful person. Choice is the benchmark of everything. You choose to be miserable. And you know, I've seen people with debilitating illness, terminal illness, who chose to be happy. So if you're like, well, Glendon, I, and I'm just like, you know, it's a choice. It's a choice. Since I've been doing the internet marketing lifestyle, there's been a few health uh, crises, a few health challenges. I'm cool. I'm good. It hasn't happened in a few years. I was in the hospital probably six weeks before I did the pilot for the storage auction show. Didn't tell them I was sick. I was talking on the phone. Barely. I used all my energy to make those phone calls. If they had known how sick I was, they probably would have pulled the plug. But I got 80% good enough to shoot the pilot, and no one seemed to be the wiser. But those things literally wore me out. I chose to push forward because the opportunity was great. And even though the show didn't happen, I made a lot of money as a consultant because of the connections I made. So the choice, and that's something I want to impress upon you. The choice that you make today may not benefit you until weeks, months, or years later. That's one of the things. The immediate gratification monster is something that can rob you of a beautiful life. But I you know, chose not to talk about a lot of stuff because, you know, typically people really are trying to figure out what's going on for me because I say a lot, but I tell nothing about my personal life. And that's a reason for that. I'm an introvert. I know it's going to sound crazy. You get on YouTube and you talk all this crap. Yeah, I'm an introvert. So I'm a very, very private person. So a lot of the personal stuff you just won't get until I decide it's time to give. But once again, it's a choice. It's a choice. Everything is a choice. So you can choose to design your life. In the choosing of designing your life, going back to my health issues, I made a choice to stay the course. 
because there was pulls. There was internal pulls. I had friends who thought I was absolutely nuts that I was in the storage auction business to write books and to be on YouTube. But it was a choice. And I'm telling you, when you decide to make that choice to design your life, be prepared for some crazy shit to jump off. Just be prepared. I am not here to tell you that it's going to be really easy or simple. For some of you, it will be. For others, it will be like you open up the door of hell because I, you're just going to create a lot of energy that you never had before. And it's going to be very unstable at first. It's going to be a rocky ride initially. You will feel that you're failing or you'll feel that it's extremely hard. And the more stuff that jumps off, the greater your reward will be. Because I literally thought that I had made one of the absolute worst decisions of my life, but I made a decision. And the second part of choice is making a commitment to the decision. If you go, hmm, we'll see what happens. You're leaving your options open, which in some cases could be a good thing. But when you are making life decisions, you have to really think about it and you have to really commit because I committed to that choice for two years. Contracted for myself. It was good. Come hell or high water, I was going to stick with it for two years. Because another thing that I know about business is 30 days is nothing. 60 days is nothing. 90 days, you really start to get into it. So it takes time for you to turn the ship of your life. It's not going to be something that's like an overnight endeavor, but making the choice which you're fully entitled to is the starting point. Because I talk to people in my consulting business who really don't understand that they have options available, but because they haven't made the proper lifestyle choices, they can't access them mentally because they're not even on the map. The why. The why, 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 why. There's going to be some overlap with this because there's another slide that is going to touch on this even more. But the why. Why do you want to design your life? For each person, that's going to be a very different and personal question. I will give you my why. I grew up in one of three kids, single parent household. I was the guinea pig, i.e. the oldest. When my brother was born, effectively my childhood ended. Then five years later, my sister was born. So essentially from 10 on up, I have been acting and occupying the position of an adult. So with that came a lot of constriction. When I joined the military, my mother became legally blind for three years. So I didn't have any money because I was supporting my mother, my sister, and my brother. It went on for three years. It was crushing. So I had this whole life map. And the thing is, I wasn't really picking what I was doing. I was just kind of going with the flow. And so far as being a kid in the household of a parent, you really don't have a lot of choice in terms of what you're going to do and how you're going to do it. So after I'm in the military, after you got the military, I get married and have kids. <laughs> so from age 10 to 32, I was doing the things that were expected of me. And I had wishes, dreams, and desires that... Just, just were eating at me because I wanted to, the first time that I wanted to write it was we're at the book club. I used to be a member of a book club. There was many women. I was the only guy. At one point, there was two of the guys. They dropped out around year two, and I stuck with it for fifteen. And one of the writers came in and we read their book, and I was just like, I want to do this. I just want. I love reading. I love the play of words. I've always loved that. When I was a kid, Reader's Digest had this thing. And, you know, this wordplay that I usually usually got 20 or I would get all of them. And I just love that stuff. And that was what I wanted to do. But since I didn't design my life and I just kind of went with the flow, I was doing all of this other stuff for other people and growing more and more resentful. 
So my why was stimulated by freedom. So the whole deal is everything is predicated on freedom. When I fully understand or understood what I wanted to do, what really made me happy, my why is I designed my life for freedom, which created some strange consequences inside of me. I could make more money if I got back at resale than I currently do. I could do that. And I wouldn't be as happy as I am now. When I get to do a YouTube video, for the good or bad, trolls or not, that shit is fun. I get to write. I get to put out a book. I get to talk to people. This is so much fun. I don't wake up in the morning going, oh, shit. I wake up in the morning like, ooh, this is another day. Some days when I was in the storage auction business, I woke up going, oh, shit. I was making money, but there was days I did not want to get up at six o'clock to fight the traffic, to be a Baffaretta, to hit the good spot. Because if I left 30 minutes later, I wasn't going to make it on time for the auction. But the money hid the resentment. The money hid all of that other stuff. So my why, based on my life, because like I said, your why is going to be totally different than mine. It's going to be 100 percent different than mine because it's going to be based on what you went through until the point that you heard this webinar. What are you going through? What's your family life? What's your background? You know, you may have grown up in abject poverty and right now you may be poor. So getting a bunch of money may be your why. It's going to be different for everything. And this is the thing Uh, for a lot of you that don't know, the first book was supposed to be a relationship book. Didn't happen because once I realized who the market was, which was women, because guys weren't going to buy the book, I put that book in the drawer. So my first book has never been published. I never put it out there. I interviewed 300 women and I realized it was something I didn't want to do after I completed the book. But I enjoyed the process. So jump to the storage auction book and the rest is history. So my why is predicated on freedom. Now, how do you get to your why? It's based on how do you want to live your life going forward? Whatever happened in the past is the past. You can't change it. You can't exhume it. You can't. It it, it is the past. It is what it used to be. So I'm going to ask you to actually say to yourself, today I choose my why, whatever that may be. Because like I said, it's going to be totally different for everybody. But it is most important because if you don't figure out your why, everything else is going to fall apart. Which is to the core values. Once again, this is very individualistic. This is totally 100%. Everyone's going to have a different core value. One of the things living in a homogenous society such as America is you're expected to be the same yet unique it creates a real mental meltdown because if you're too different you're punished if you don't conform enough you're punished so there's this great middle ground that a lot of people are in so it becomes a really tricky mental game that you have to play with yourself because once again i know if i was a good boy on youtube and i did not use the word fuck as pro With the propensity that I do, I would have more people. I probably would have some corporate speaking engagements. But going back to my why, because that's once you figure out your why, a lot of your other decisions going forward become very easy. I don't give a fuck. As you know, if a corporation wants me to come speak to them, they need to accept me the way that I am because I accept myself the way that I am. And it means that we are incompatible. So. This is something I learned going through some very trying periods in my life on the boarding house. Uh, I had to go to a men's group because I was not dealing well with the divorce at all. I was freaking nutting up. And someone said something to me. And there was another participant in the group as we were all there like bitching and whining because we that's what we were doing. We were commiserating. God said the inside always wins. 
And it's true. Whatever your core desire is, I don't care what you tell the world. I don't care what you tell yourself in the mirror. I don't care if you have affirmations on the mirror. Whatever your core is, it's going to win. Regardless. And when I speak of core, give me an example. I had an opportunity for a guy to run drugs through my business, drug money, laundry money through the storage auction business. I know a lot of people don't agree, but I've never been high. I've never done any type of drug in my life. I think drugs are bad, but that's my belief. So with my core beliefs of drugs are bad, I cannot associate, even though the money would have been fantastic. I could have been driving the Bentley, could have had 18 bitches on lock. No, because it totally would have, I wouldn't have been able to sleep at night. Because it's just not my thing. Now, to say that, let me just say this. There are some people whose core belief, that's not a problem, and they'll be in the drug game and become fantastically wealthy. That's their core belief. I'm talking about mine, and I'm talking about yours. Whatever your core beliefs. Um, I don't believe in rape. There are some guys that do. And, you know, date rape like, you know, she's drunk. Uh, like this thing that happened with Jameis Winston. Everybody was drinking. Something happened. Was it rape? Was it? I was in that situation twice and i backed up because this is my arrogance this is one of my core beliefs if you don't want all of this the g-verse i'm out that's me that's why i can never be part of a train or all this other stuff because it doesn't work with my core values so what i'm telling you once you figure out your core values because a lot of things no one really talks about this because if you are indoctrinated by religion, your core value is Jesus. Even though based on your background, based on who you are, you may have a total set of differently core values that conflict with the religious, religious dogma, which creates a lot of angst. I see a lot of people dealing with this, such as you're a Christian, but you're fornicated. If you're deep with that, you can't have sex. There is no way we're going to no, know. That's what people try to do. They try to shade it. When, which shows the conflict. So understand, the inside will always win. Whatever your core value is, if your core value is, if you're a man, and you believe that if, as a man, that you must go out and earn money and support your family, you are not going to work well with a feminist who believes in equal shared responsibility of the domestic duties. It's just not going to work for you. You can try it, but your core values is, I am... Weber, the wolf, I go out, I kill rabbits, I kill gerbils, I bring them back home to Winona, the she-wolf, and that's how we do this. If that's your core value, understand, grant what society says, it's not wrong. And the feminist core value, it's not wrong. When people own their core values, live that life authentically, magical stuff happens. So, Whatever your core value is, you got to figure it out. And it may take some introspection. It may be buried under a lot of stuff that you was told that you should be that really isn't you. Because one of the things I put on Facebook years ago, one of the hardest thing, one of the things that takes the most courage is the courage to be yourself. Because so many people are not that brave. You might be that person that 90% of the people that meet you don't like you, but the 10% that do, they love, they love you to pieces. They would kill for you. That's who you are. You got to figure it out. You have to own it and you have to walk in that because doors open when you're being yourself. So if you're not working with your core values, you might make a lot of money, but you might be miserable. You might be in a marriage with someone that you like, but don't love. I mean, there, there's so many things that happen with the lack of ownership, introspection, and revelation of your core values. Because you might be trying to do something that you it's just it's just this big thing, and you'll be up at night because it's just so much of a conflict. So when you design your life, you can design your life to be congruent with your core values and you don't have these issues. A strange fact about me that kind of bugs people out. I have not used an alarm clock 
in well over a decade. I can wake myself up whatever time I need to get up. I don't have a television in my room because, and by core values is, television programs are mine, so I don't have one in there. Bedrooms for two things, sleeping and fucking. That's what the bedroom's for in my core values. Other people's are different. But once you figure this stuff out, you will sleep so well. No tossing, no turning, no craziness. Because you're congruent and in line with who you are. As strange as that sounds. Another part of designing your life is there's this big thing. There's something in you that's huge. Don't know what it is. I didn't know what my big thing was until I wrote the first book. It was that 14 months when I did the webinar. I made 62,000 in the first 14 months. That's the least amount of money I've made in 14 months and years. And I was absolutely tickled because I was doing what I wanted to do. Everything was clicking and it was just like, this is it. That's the big thing. And the big thing and the reason I rechanged, uh, rebranded the company from Conundra Publishing to Conundra Media is I am a media content generator. That's video, that's print, that's audio. I create media. So that made sense to rebrand the company. And that's another thing about the big thing. Whatever your big thing is, you have to do it. Whatever your big thing is. And you've got to do the work to find out what it is because I never in my life would ever think that the life that I live today would be mine. There was a time when I was going through some matriculations with Amazon. I almost got kicked off because I was not. If you don't, if you have an item on Amazon, then you seriously drop the price on your website. They don't like that. So that was going on. And at one point, I took everything off Amazon, took everything off, and I just sold from my website. Made more money than ever made before doing that, the internet marketing thing. And it was just like, oh, maybe I'm not supposed to do with everyone else. And that your lesson there is what you got to do something. I mean, your thing might be washing kittens or shaving chinchillas. I don't know what your big thing is, but you got to deal with your big thing because it will align up the rest of your life. Because this goes back to the design. When you start designing, when you start figuring this stuff out, The right man will show up in your life. The right chick will show up in your life. The right job, if you want a job, the right business. All this stuff just starts dropping. Going back to when I did the pilot, I was not a good, as they call it, the talent. I wasn't good talent. I was always asking questions. I was driving the producer crazy. We actually became friends. I just didn't feel right about a lot of the stuff they wanted to do. And it probably cost me maybe a million bucks. It probably did. Because if I had abandoned myself and abandoned my beliefs, the show probably would have happened. You know, I tell the story a little way because it's better. But the reality is, if I had played ball, I probably would have got on television. But I could not do it. I couldn't do it. And I know for a lot of people, it means nothing. Because the shows came on, they staged units. And actually, I don't know if that's true because Hester's life is screwed up. Daryl got divorced. I don't know what's going on with Brandy and Gerard. But what I saw, and this is just my interpretation, that many people that do reality television, their life tends to become really screwed up in the most important areas and in an area of making money and gaining fame. It goes well, but the rest goes to shit. So with the big thing, you will grow or die. And look, let's really examine that because I always tell my female friends who say this, these words, and you will never, ever hear Glendon Cameron. I'm speaking to myself in the third person. I try not to do that, but it just happens. You will never, ever hear Glendon Cameron say he never needs a woman. Because I know if I don't have romantic relationships, part of me will die. 
the softer, the kinder, the tender, that will go out the window. And that's what happens to a lot of people. And after, say, five, ten years of being out there in the relationship wilderness with no love and affection, parts of you die. I see people that don't even know how to relate to the opposite sex anymore because that part of them has died. You know, you don't need a man or a woman, whatever your proclivity is, to live a life, but to have a certain type of relationship, you need that. And I'm honest enough with myself to know that. So with that growing or dying thing, if you're not working on your big thing, whatever it is, whatever it is, I mean, it may be very hard for you. I make no promises here. I'm not, this is not easy work. It took me literally three years the first time, boarding house time. Then it took me another two years when I became an internet marketer to really start figuring this out. I'm not going to make some wonderful promise to you that you'll listen to this webinar and then tomorrow it'll be done. It, it, it's, it's, it's not. Now, this is the other part of this. And this is more of a question to judge the temperature of your life. Are you living or are you simply alive? This guy goes back to what I was talking about sleep. Because I talked to a lot of people who are on all types of drugs. A drug to make them go to sleep, a drug to make them go wake up. And I'm just like, what is going on? And all that is masking because you're just living. If you're alive, you don't need that stuff. You, don't, you simply don't. I want you to think of the last time that you woke up and you were happy when your feet hit the floor. I want you to really think about that. I know it sounds like something small. It sounds of little consequence, but this is the deal. That's something you do every day. And if you're not happy every day that you get up, that's a problem. And ask yourself, why aren't you happy? What's the real reason? Because this is one of my beliefs. And this is one of the reasons I may be chubby, but I've worked out most of my life. Go to the doctor like shocked at the blood pressure is like, really, your blood pressure is that low? And you're looking at me like, I'm like, yeah, it is. I'm a kid. I didn't grow up. Living a life like that produces a lot of stress. Stress produces disease. Stress produces headaches. Stress produces, it produces a lot of bad stuff. And I want you to think, if you can get rid of that stuff, it'll be amazing what you can accomplish in your life. So are you living or are you just simply, are you living? I actually said that backwards. Are you, are you alive or are you are simply living? I, I screwed this up, but I will break it down so you forever know. Being alive is this. The dog there with the choppers, he's alive. Because that smile, if you've ever noticed, if you've ever done body language thing, there's something called a false smile and there's a, a, an organic smile. That's an organic smile. And the reason, easy way you can tell is when the, you see the teeth, the eyes also light up. You cannot have a real smile and your eyes don't light up and the rest of your face muscles move. You can't. That's how you can tell someone's giving you like a, a cheese and grin or something. But when you're alive, you draw people who are alive to you and see this this is another part of designing your life when you design your life and you do the things that you need to do you bring appropriate people into your space you bring the right people into your life it is one of the weirdest things i can go to any one of the restaurants in my neighborhood and I'll sit down and invariably I'll talk to someone that can assist me some way. Just sitting there talking, hey, you know, Alabama get, or, you know, you see, it just happens over and over again. Because when you design your life, you turn on that beacon that draws good people to you. I had some crazy dating videos up on my other channel, Mr. Glendon Cameron. And one day I was looking at some of my videos and I said, the last time you actually went through something like that, I, you, I couldn't remember. 
I just had, I remember certain things. It had been years. And I was like, why are you bringing all that negativity into your future and your present? So I took him down because I wasn't really living like that. But it was a saucy topic and I knew people would watch and talk about it because misery topics. And there's a lot of misery topics on YouTube that do very well because there's a lot of people who are misery and misery energy brings miserable people together. So if you do a misery topic like uh, dating, women ain't shit, men ain't shit or, you know, Republican or liberal, all this brings a lot of people because a lot of people are miserable. So when you're alive you get rid of a lot of that crazy stuff that pops up in your life. It's amazing. It truly is. Now, this is the thing about change. Change is not an on and off switch. You can't, like, click. Okay, I'm changed. I'm done. No, no, no. no. It's a process. It has taken me getting married, getting divorced, having several businesses, and having a few that were really successful, to watching my partner die, to writing a book. And I would say the last seven years, no, let's say seven, the last 13 years with the last seven being super rich have been the best years of my life. And it started when I started making choices because the choice will always precede the results, sometimes by minutes, hours, days, weeks, months, or years. But the choice has to come first. And that's why change is the process. Sometimes you're doing the right stuff, but because you aren't getting the results that you want as fast as someone else said you should get them, you abandon the path. And that's why I give myself like, you know, with the Hustler Mindset Project and the YouTube, I have like three and four and five year commitments to myself because I know me. I have a lazy do nothing side that could just take over and shut my life down. So it's like, okay, we're doing this for two years. No matter what happens, because even if it fails, even if it fails, I will get benefit out of it that will make it more than worthwhile. And that comes back to designing your life. Because now, you know, with the freedom deal and I have mad road rage. So working from home really benefits me and my fellow uh, commuters because I'm not out there driving people crazy. It goes back to some things that you want to do, some things that you want to have. So for me, my choice and my why dictate that I will take less money for more freedom. Many people would think that I'm an absolute idiot if they knew how much money I used to make. Would think that I lost my freaking mind. <laughs> but I also know how business works. I call it the Waffle House example. Waffle House had one or two restaurants, if I remember, for like 10 years before they started growing like crazy. They took that 10 years to refine their process, to make their systems work. Because if you ever went to Waffle House, menu hasn't changed in years. It's the same thing. But you go to any Waffle House or drive by any morning, they're packed because they've hung their process. And that's why I'm not like overly concerned with the financial aspect because as I hunt this, as I build this, as I become better, it'll come. And that's one of the hardest things to do when you are financially pressed to think like that. When your lights are about to be shut off, you have to pay daycare, your car is about to be repossessed, or you got a foreclosure. It's real hard to even hold those kind of thoughts in your head because there's so much going on. And that is one of the greatest gifts that came from living in the boarding house. I learned to be faithful in chaos. So many things happened there. And I look back. I never was harmed. I never had anyone really. There was one time where some people were going to do some stuff to me. But there was a voice that popped in my head that said, run. And I listened to it and it saved me. 
But learning to be faithful in chaos got me to the other side because it was like that lighthouse to my future. I just knew it was there. I couldn't see the path. <laughs> there was days that was like, okay, really? Is this really happening? Really today? And you just keep going. And then I will tell you, once you start designing your life and start making better choices, you're not going to have those bad days. You will have some bad days and you will have some stuff that happens. But once you design, align those core values, make the right choices, figure out your why, a lot of those bad days just don't happen anymore. Because, see, this is the thing. Those days still happen. But since you've changed, you're not affected and impacted in the same manner that you used to be. I would say one of the benefits of YouTube and dealing with haters, I can deal with criticism better than I've ever been able to deal with it in my life. I don't get mad. A lot of times I look at stuff and I giggle. I mean, seriously, I'm just like, oh, really? If you're going to really come up with some hate, could you do better than that? I mean, that's like elementary school. I need grad school level hate. I mean, if you're going to hate, just hate. And I'm sitting there laughing at this stuff. And when I first started, it had me feeling some kind of way about myself, like, Maybe I'm not going to put that video up today. And that's a very real fear for a lot of people because they know how mean the net is. So they're like, I don't know. I don't know. So that's the process. That's what I went through to get me to the place that I'm at today. Making decisions, having choice, figuring out my why. My why is freedom. That's why I don't ever see myself having like a regular job again. If a company approached me and created something that allowed me to have freedom and wanted to pay me a lot of money, of course I would do it. But if they were like, we want you to do this and oh, clink, clink, here's some handcuffs, I would turn it down. I would turn it down because you just heard me say, I pretty much screwed up a television show. <laughs> And it was funny because so many producers for about two years, every month or every two months, a new production company was calling me up and, hey, let's do this. And, hey, let's pick your brain. And, hey, do we want to fly to New York? And I was like, no, because it was still, I'm not going to say it's slimy. I'm going to say it wasn't for me. It just wasn't for me. But that's what happens when you figure out your why, when you design your life. It becomes easy to make difficult decisions because you have a framework already in place that guides you. And that's why the change is a process, because once you get this stuff figured out, someone can ask you all kinds of questions and you'll know you'll have an answer just like that, because you've thought about you. You thought about your life. You design your life. And it's a wonderful thing. So. Now to the solution. If you're in Hustler University, I didn't announce this on YouTube, but I didn't announce this in email. Uh, it's a 90 day workshop. It's going to be real different. It's going to be brief because what I'm learning in training people is consistency is better than volume. If you can do one thing a day that's different than what you did the day before and continue to improve on that, you could be literally blown away at what happens to you in 90 days. So it's going to be a very different course. Like I said, if you're in Hustle University, the Hustle Mindset Project, you're in. A uh, new thing that I'm doing. There's no point in really telling you the most expensive option when it would just make more sense for you to join the Hustle University program to get this because you would also get the resale. There's a lot of stuff that's going to happen. I'm, putting out more workshops, more training, more whatever you want to call it, information than I've ever had before in my life because I figured out what I want to do with the Hustler Mindset Project. When I did it, it was to change people's mindset. That was the goal. But it didn't really work out the way that I thought it would. And the new thing is because the first time someone told me, dude, I made six figures this year. That's gross. That wasn't net. Let's be real clear about that. For a lot of people, this is the most money they've ever made in their lives. And then with the accessory information on manage your money or your money will manage you, making better decisions, buying you stuff. 
not only are they making more money, they're getting more benefit. And I was just like, this is what I want to do. This, this is what I want to do with the Hustler Mindset Project. I want to make as many people as I can. That's, I can't save the world. I can't save everybody. This isn't for everyone. But if I can make a certain number of people successful with the life and the finances, I am little, I'm, I'm doing the La Vida Loca. I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm doing the, you know, the Maury Povich, I ain't the daddy dance, you know? That's the stuff that makes me tick. That's what I want to do. That's where I want this thing to go. And that's the reason there'll be more webinars and stuff like this, because I know you can get all the money in the world and be miserable. And it isn't because money makes you miserable. It's because you're not addressing the other things that are even more important than the money. Once you get to your why, make that choice, figure out your core values, you can have a penny in your pocket and be freaking ecstatic because the decision, the choice precedes the results. So you got all that stuff clicking. You just know it's a matter of time before the other stuff comes. And that's what happened when I made the decision to get myself a better job. It was a firm decision. It was a choice. When the guy was like, uh, you know, I can get you two more weeks. And I said, no, I'll figure it out. I sat there in the chair. I wasn't mad. I wasn't. I was depressed, but I wasn't mad. And I said that and I took action and my life changed. And I was like, oh, that's what you do. You take ownership accountability. So the 90 day program starts December 16th. Yes, we're working through the holidays it will be short stuff. It will be something very manageable because I've been doing this going on five years. My fifth year started July 17th. I've learned that for people to be effective, they must get it and they must do it and they must be able to do it. So if you've got a business, you're married, you have kids, you don't have a whole bunch of time to do all this stuff. I will say the resale matrix, that stuff's going to be very intense, but that's only for a select group of people. But this will be definitely more doable and more impactful. So that's the webinar. The workshop will start December 16th. Like I said, if you're in Hustler University, you're going to get it. And if you are not, the best way to get it is to join Hustle University. Uh, everyone that's signed up for this webinar, I will send you a link if that's your desire. If that's because another thing I've learned, everybody's not for everybody. You know, you may listen to this pie, this webinar, which may steer you to someone else that may be great for you. That's the stuff that I'm really about because I know in my little chocolatey heart of hearts, I've helped a lot of people, and that that really makes me feel good. It really does. And I know going forward, I'm going to help even more. It may be pushing you to that other person that's more suitable for you. That That's not a problem for me. But because I know as I continue to put this stuff out, my life gets better and better and better and better. So that's the deal. So with that, I'm popping out. And if anyone has a question, <laughs> I see I have some questions. So all right. What I'm going to do is roll down. And um, just answer questions. Uh, this one's from George Cinda. And I'm taking steps to develop an online presence, but I'm doing it mostly by myself. I have a little bit of help from someone online. We're having to learn it all myself. Any suggestions? I'm about to start podcast. Uh, I actually have some real great suggestions for you. There's a guy by the name of Pat Flynn, Smart Passive Income. Go to iTunes and he's got a he's got a podcast and this is what you do. You start at the first podcast and you listen to all of them. It's got to be about like 70 now, 60 or 70, I believe. And you will get a lot of the answers to your questions just from that one source. Um, I went to his podcast. I listened to one, put together some of the things that were just followed through instructions and I did extremely well. I was a high recommend. Um, once again, this is another one from George. And neither my girlfriend nor my mother believe I can succeed in creating a business from my home. 
whenever you're doing internet marketing, working from home, it is weird to 90 something percent of the people that you meet because that doesn't fit their income producing profile. I go to work, I make money, I have income. Sitting at home doing some uh, stuff on the internet, that actually doesn't work out for a lot of people. It really does. Oh, talking about cats. Uh, this is another one from George. I'm consciously taking steps learning how to do things online, but I have no idea how to design the rest of my life. It's something I never thought of consciously. For years, I went to work, went home, had no life. Now I'm learning from strangers, but can use any help, any suggestions. Um, yeah, join Hustle University. We're going to talk about this for starting December 16th for 90 days. Because no one talks about this stuff. We live in a society that says, get money. If you get money, your life should be great. When you don't really deal with the other stuff that's really important, because I used to work in a hospital and I dealt with a lot of elderly patients. And for those who really know me, I have a soft spot in my heart for elderly people. I talked to those people and nobody was, it was always, I wish I had kids. We have a generation of women. And this is just my opinion. If you're a woman listening to this and you get pissed off, so be it. We have a group of women who have bought into that, get the career, get all this money, don't have kids. And they're going to be 40 some years old wondering what the hell happened. I have so many friends who are going through that right now. It ain't funny. So, you know, live the life you want. Like with the girl, you, you're just going to have to stop talking to them because until you start making real money, it's going to be on you. Uh, this is from Journal. This webinar would actually be in HU, so you'll be able to access it. Uh, this is different. Can you give me advice on the terminus of dealing with sleep deprivation? I believe it's mental due to the stress, but I'm not sure. I would say go online, and if you don't have the money, go online and teach yourself transcendental meditation. It's a little tricky, but it's well worth the effort because it will teach you how to run. You know, once you learn how to shut your mind off or at least take a lot of the noise out, Sleeping's not going to be a problem. I know from experience. Uh, this is from Dale Williams. I need to get rid of the stress that will allow me to help my mind free from. Will the 90 days help me on that? Yes, it will. And you're in Hustler University, so you're going to get it. Can, this is from Jack Small. Can you change your core values and your big thing? How would you go about doing that? The first step is you got to figure out what they are, truly what they are. And one real simple way to figure that out, and this, this is kind of obscene, but if you think that you're about money, imagine that you have one day to live and what would you do? Think about it. You have one day to live. What would you do? And that will start revealing your core values, because I was with a friend who was in the hospital who thought she was going to die. She was married to this guy she didn't need to be married to. I was sitting in the room. Doctor came in. I was going to leave. She wants you to stay. And he's like, well, it may spread. This may happen. She called this other dude versus her husband because that was her heart's desire. She didn't marry him because no one in her family thought he was the guy. That's the only reason she married him, because of her family. So your big thing might be what you need to do, and you've allowed other people to talk you out of it. But, you know, if you come into um, – there's, there's going to be a lot more stuff like this. There's going to be a lot more stuff because when I was putting together the Hustle Mindset Project, it was supposed to be only mindset because people don't really get – that if you don't get the mindset stuff together, you may make a lot of money. You may build a very successful business, but you could be the, the, the lady with the floor print sofas and the eight cats. Or you can be the dude that's 75 years old with the 21 year old and everybody know what that's about. 
I mean, that's what the reality is. So definitely, you know, it, that takes more exploration because you got to figure out really is your big thing worth changing. Uh, this is from Derek Jones. Where's the best place to find a book editor? Okay. Go to your local college, find an English student, and work a deal with them. And also, make sure, send them whatever you're writing. And um, if they don't like what you're writing, don't use them. If they don't like your writing style, they don't like you, they will mess up your work. That happened to me. So that's the cheap way. There's a few um, resources online. There's um, Script Bendy. Um, they're very good, and you know, but they're not cheap. But they're very good. All right. Uh, <laughs> could you repeat the name slower? Let's see what is. I actually need more information to answer your question. Uh, Og Mandina. Okay, I don't think that's a real person, but I'll answer this question. You mentioned divorce. Was this because your business partner? Nope, my divorce happened long before I met her. Uh, this is from April. Also going to podcasting. Podcast. Oh, yeah, podcastanswerman.com is a great site. Actually, the guy, his name is Cliff. He's in that with Pat Flint. Okay, that would be smartpassiveincome.com. Go to I just go to go to Google and put in Pat Flynn podcast and you will find it because he does a great job of uh, keyword and stuff. Uh, this is from Isaiah. Legit question. I am currently working on a low paid job and I would like to get into picking or later on auctions. But I have a separate big thing that's completely different from all of my career choices, etc. What do you suggest? I would say go for your big thing first. That may facilitate the other stuff because it's going to gnaw at you. It's going to um, rob you of energy and it just will not leave you alone. Do that first and it may give you the means to do the other stuff. Uh, Bossy Babe, when is the next free cast webinar? That's going to be a little different. Uh, actually, it's going to be Friday. I need to put that out tomorrow. And I'm going to do something called Hustler Profiles or Disruptive. I hadn't quite titled it, but going back to the some people that I helped become successful, I'm going to start sharing their stories. I've got four people lined up and some others in the hopper. So that's going to be Friday and there'll be other stuff. There's going to be a lot of stuff going on with Spreecast. Where can I find more information about Hustlers University? Um, I would say YouTube. I've got like six or seven videos. Go to the last early part of this month, and there's a video talking about exactly what's going on with Hustler University. Uh, Chris, in restarting my life, post-traumatic stress disorder counseling from the VA, Going through divorce, want to get stuff going, looking at auctions, etc. Where would I where would I start with you? Hustle you one step. Okay, that's a heavy question. Um yeah, your life is like total chaos. I would start, unless you are broke, I would start with hustle you because we're gonna do designing your life and the resale matrix. There will be a phenomenal amount of information in Hustle You. You won't be able to go through it in a month or two. You just won't. So my suggestion is, you know, do this tonight. Sit down and write out a life plan. Take a sheet of paper and say, OK, this is my life now. Well, actually, don't even say you know what your life is. Write what you want your life to become. If you want to get married again. Put it down there. A lot of dudes be like, I never want to get married. I went to a wedding a few months of a friend who did that shit. I'll never get married again. He's married. So if you want to get married again, write that down. Even though you're going through the midst of divorce, if you want a house, put that down. 
Start creating a plan for your future and it will help you deal with a lot of stress because it gives you direction. <laughs> uh, no homo, but do you do wardrobe consults? I'm tired of looking like a scrub. I've never done anything like that. Um, my style has been preppy since the eighth grade. It hasn't changed in a long time, so I don't know. We could just look at that. I mean, I can give you some just suggestions. I will say this, and this is something a guy taught me when I was in the military. One of the best ways to make what your stuff looks look good is make sure it fits. That, that will make you look so spiffy that your stuff fits or fits you. It'll, you'll be amazed. Yeah, sure thing. Uh, Pat Flynn. Yeah, I think you got it by now. What are some of your present side hustles? I actually don't have a side hustle. I will give you a um, conundrum media matrix. I produce videos. I produce podcasts. I produce books. All that comes under conundrum media. So I may write romance books or erotica that comes under. Everything comes under communication. It just branches out. The, the whole base is communication. I don't really have a side hustle as I think about it. Because everything works together. There's nothing like, uh, I will say, when I was going to do resellology, I changed that. That would have been more of a side hustle because that would have been a radical departure from the things I'm already doing. Uh, this webinar will not be in HU tonight because it's so long, it's going to take a while to process it. But it will be there sometime tomorrow. Uh, Chris? Thank you, brother. Much appreciated. No problem. How do you schedule your time for writing books? When I'm writing a book, I'm not always writing books. Uh, I went through a period where I wrote every day for two years and I did videos and I drove myself crazy. I plan my books in my head. And when I do write, I have a three hour schedule. My goal is to write for three hours and that usually produces 3000 to 5000 words. And I totally scheme out my books before I write them. That's one of the reasons that some things I was going to write, I changed my mind because they didn't scheme out properly. So I make the time because I pretty much control my schedule. Sometimes I don't really sleep normal hours anyway. Oh, sure thing. Can you technically charge per question and how do I actually contact you beyond Fiverr? I actually um, shut that Fiverr thing down. My consulting is real expensive. The best way to, because I charge 400 bucks an hour. I do have every now and then, this isn't a monthly thing. I'll get some company or somebody that will say, hey, we want to talk to you. And they'll buy like two hours or one company bought 10. And they were real happy. So Hustling University, uh, as it grows, the Facebook group, there's a lot of stuff that goes in there. But the cheapest way you can get to me to talk to you one on one is join Hustle U and I give everyone a break on personal consoles. Sure. No problem. T price. Sure thing. Uh, what's the best way to contact you to set up a consult? I think you just heard what I told the other guy It is is to go through Hustling University. Just join and then I will give you a list and everything. Oh, yeah, I, the, this is my recommendation on Fiverr. Unless you have a really specific skill or a ton of time, it's just not the way to go. You've got to have something very, very niche or specific. Uh, one of the porn is always in the DVD comes out. That book's been out for about two years. Uh, there's supposed to be another edition. Just hadn't gotten around to writing it. Oh, part two. Yeah, I haven't gotten around to writing it. Uh, T. Price. I'm new to your material and I really like it. Should I start with the Hustler Mindset or Hustler University? Uh, let me. You can only do Hustler's University. Uh, the Hustler Mindset Project, Disruptive Life Coaching. 
I'm picking people for those projects. Uh, there's a lot of people who've been with Hustle University since day one, so they're in those projects. But the only thing you can get in right now is Hustle University. So there's a lot. Let, let me just say this. If you join Hustle University, and because the thing is, I have to put you in the Facebook group or I have to put you in the group. So sometimes it's two hours, 24 hours. If you join Hustle University tonight and just went through the material that's in there, it would take you the rest of the month to go through it. So definitely where you want to go. This is Isaiah. I happen to be a programmer and I happen to be working some fiber gigs right now. What do you suggest to market? I'm working to save up for Hustle University. Uh, that's a hard one without really knowing what you're doing. I mean, you know, programming, that's really wide. Uh, from April, can your consultation break with, with be extended to immediate family members? My son is in college and really can use your business advice. Uh, I will say that since you have been with me for like three years, I would do that for you. No problem. Just uh, hit me on Facebook. I, I would definitely do that for you. Sure thing. This is the thing with Fiverr, and this is Isaiah. He does a lot of stuff. Unless you can do something really fast, you might be better off spending your time making the app and putting it on and, and on uh, iTunes. Because what I would say is go to Fiverr and look at stuff that you can do really quickly, something that you can create an assembly line or a process and do that because say it takes you an hour to do a gig but you're only making five bucks well really it's not an hour because you have an hour to do the gig you have to talk to people you have to follow up so it's like an hour and a half for maybe five bucks and it's not really five bucks it's four because they're going to take a dollar so you really got to think of, that's why you know fiverr was a recommend from from me when it first came out but it's just Unless you've got something really special or a lot of free time, it's a hard way to make money. Any webinar for marketing your business on Google Plus? I was looking for info about that today. Not so much info out there on the web. I'm going to tell you why. Google Plus is still growing. I think it's going to get big in the future. If you're going to market anything, this is, and we will talk about this in the six months with Hustling University, you need to create your tribe. This is what's happening. And if you've noticed with Panda and all these other updates, people that had websites, they were doing really well. And their traffic disappeared because Google changed the game. I haven't had that problem because of YouTube. You, These are the three ways you can market. A YouTube channel, a podcast, or a Facebook group page that works better than any of the other stuff because you may figure out something that works really well with Google and then Google's going to change the rules and I've actually seen on boards people lost 50% to 90% of their traffic overnight I've never experienced that with uh, YouTube sure thing April okay well this is how this is going. You know, I already said what's going on. Uh, it's going to start December 16th, and I'm probably going to put this up on YouTube because, you know, this is the free one. And then, like I said, I'll send everybody a link within a day or so who wants to join Hustle University. So I'm going to look. Sure, Deb, no problem. And I'm going to shut this down. For those of you in Hustle University, this will be there tomorrow because it's 9:10 and it's not happening tonight. I'm not even gonna lie to you. All right, I want to thank everybody that came out. I really appreciate it, and I will see you on the good side.